If your car begins to suddenly accelerate, our advice is to put the car into neutral, hit the brakes, and come to a safe stop. But what if you don't do that? Shouldn't the car's brakes be powerful enough to stop the car even at wide open throttle? Well, there are technologies available, like brake override systems, that do help that situation. But if your car doesn't have it, what happens? Well, we're going to tell you. We've instrumented this 2010 Toyota Avalon, which does not have that system, with a optical fifth wheel, and we have the test equipment to find out what the braking distances are when that happens. Now, I'm going to begin the test. My foot is fully on the gas pedal right now. The car is accelerating wide open throttle. Without lifting off the gas, I'm putting my foot on the brake and holding it down as hard as I can, trying to stop the vehicle. I'm pushing very hard here. I'm almost stopped but I'm still inching along, I'm pushing with all my might, and I'm finally stopped. The car stopped at 513 feet. Now this car normally stops at 140 from 60 miles per hour. 513 feet is a very long time to keep your foot all the way in on the brake, and I pushed with all my might. Someone else might not be able to. But that's not the whole story. As you saw, it took a very long time to stop, and took a lot of effort. Now, in the real world, would someone actually leave their foot down on the brake? Well, let's see what happens if you lift your foot off the brake in this situation. Again, wide open throttle, 60 miles per hour, hitting the brakes, car slowing down. I'm going to lift off my brakes just once, and then back down. I've lost power assist. I cannot slow this vehicle down. I'm pushing all my might. I'm going 40. Say I lift off my brake again and to pump them. Now I'm going 60, cannot slow down the vehicle. Lift off again, 80 miles an hour, I'm powerless to slow this vehicle down. I'm going to put the car into neutral, now I can stop the vehicle. Now what does this mean? In the real world, people will actually lift the foot off the brake, perhaps to pump the brakes to get more power, perhaps they're trying to fiddle with a floor mat, but the point is, is when you lift your foot off the brake, even one time, you lose your power assistance and it becomes almost impossible to stop the vehicle. Now this 2010 Avalon, it's been recalled. And when the recall gets done, they're gonna install a brake throttle override system, which disables the throttle enough so that the brakes can easily outpower the throttle. Now the 2010 Camry test car we have here this car has undergone that same recall, and you're going to see what happens when we do that same test in this car. So just like we tried in the Avalon, my foot is fully to the floor, I'm accelerating hard, 60 miles per hour, and I'll press on the brake. The car stops. The engine just goes to an idle. Now, more importantly, I'm going to do the same test again, but this time lift my foot off of the brake pedal in a pumping action. Foot's on the brake, I lift off. Back down, I still have power brakes. This is really, really important. And this same thing that I tried with the Avalon, it rendered the Avalon impossible to stop unless I were to put the car into neutral. Here, I retain the power brakes, and the car comes to a safe stop quickly. Now, as you can see, this is an important safety advance. And Toyota, they'll be putting into all their cars going forward. But some enthusiasts are a bit worried, because after all, it's taking power away from the driver. And there are situations where you might want to press the gas and the throttle at the same time. But what we found, it actually doesn't get in the way. Take a look what happens when we drive this GTI, which does have the same technology. So the reason why it's not going to get in the way, necessarily for enthusiasts, is because it doesn't completely disable the throttle. So as I'm going into this corner in this GTI, I'm going to do what's called a heel-toe downshift. What that means is I'm going to blip the throttle. I'm braking, downshift, blip the throttle, have a smooth downshift. This is something you might do if you're in an autocross or a racetrack. But the reason I'm able to do this is because even though I'm on the brake, I can give it throttle and smooth things out. Another thing I could do is trail braking. Go around this corner, I'm on the brake just a little bit, helps rotate the car. I'm still giving it throttle, I still have the throttle application, but if I actually needed to stop, both feet down, the car stops easily and I'm safe. 
And there are some other legitimate and not so legitimate reasons why you might want to put your feet on the brake and the gas at the same time. For instance, say you're on a very steep hill. You might want to give it some gas before you let off the brake so you don't roll backwards. That could be useful in an off-road situation or in a boat ramp. And in fact, we were even able to do a brake stand on our Mercedes-Benz E350, where we put our foot on the brake and gave it lots of gas to spin the rear wheels. There's really no reason to do it, but the point is, is that the brake override technology, it doesn't get in the way of the driver controls. So we think it's great that Toyota's putting brake override in all the new Toyotas, but why not more manufacturers? German vehicles have been doing it for a while now, but basically every manufacturer really needs to look at this because it's an important safety feature and it doesn't get in the way of anything you need to do.